Okay, today is part two to a video that you guys really enjoyed a lot, and that is about estrogenics. Why estrogenics? They are chemicals in our world around us today that affect our hormone levels so much that they can change the shape of our sausage and eggs, if you get my meaning there, right? They can change the shape of our, our sperm so much that we can't have babies anymore, right? This is something that we really have to care about. Do I have your attention yet, right? Now that you care, I'm going to tell you the resource that I'm going to use to back up the facts in this video. It's a book called Estrogeneration. It's a science book. It's by a guy called Anthony G.J. PhD, right? Real doctor here. President of the International Medical Research Collaborative. Okay, so this is some guy that actually has credentials to back up who he is, right? So the stuff we've gone through before in video number one is stuff to do with food packaging, right? A few topics to kind of rustle through here just to give you a preview of that video. Cooking in plastic, coffee cups, BPA, cartons, tin cans, alternatives we can use, glass, ceramic, things like this, metal water bottles. Video two is this one right now. That's going to be talking about the food itself. What foods are estrogenic? What foods decrease our testosterone like we're facing right now today? A historic meteoric decrease in the global levels of testosterone right they are far less than what they used to be and why is that so we're going to discuss all of that today the foods that cause this decrease in testosterone alternatives we can use and things that i do in my life things about drinking water and shower water things like this video number three is going to be about uh other changes we can use right conditions about our, te our testicles and like the the temperature as well like it's, it's very Kind of there's fine details here that are very easy to put in place but things that you wouldn't even think about right furniture materials that we have in our clothing and our sofas and chairs and carpeting things like this and what else ingredients and toiletries so like soap body wash sun cream toothpaste all these kind of things and much more to talk about in the coming videos but today we will focus on food itself so now that i've got all those details out of the way this video is going to become a lot more chatty I'm just going to go through the list of things and topics I have on the screen behind you guys on my laptop and I want to go through those and my experience and what I've seen to be able to change in my life to better my exposure to estrogenics and, and therefore increasing my levels of testosterone and like having a better masculine health afterwards. So first of all, food itself. So the main categories here are grains, basically. Most grains, wheat, oats, soy, corn, peanuts, beer. Beer, if you didn't know, is made from grains as well. The one you probably heard about is soy, right? We, ha we hear the common phrase, soy boy. It's where like a man drinks too much like soy milk or like, eats too much soy products and he gets like man boobs, right? We never stop to think about why that is. It's literally because the estrogenic foods he's eating are causing him to become a woman, right? It's not just decreases in testosterone, it's changing our bodies to become more of a woman, which is unhealthy. If you're born a man and the stuff that you're eating makes you become a woman, that is inherently negative for your health, right? And it's not just fat. It's not man boobs like, oh, he's so obese that he's like, it looks like he has boobs. It's literally breast tissue growing above your pec right it's literally like as if your body's like oh we're receiving signals to become a woman now right and so br actual boobs grow on your chest right that's how messed up it is today okay so soy boy we've all heard of that right all these kind of products wheat so even like things like porridge oats things like that soy corn peanuts beer right we, we see these dads all around, right? You drink tons and tons of beer and they have very unhealthy bodies and, and man boobs, right? And this is why, these kind of estrogenic products. Pesticides used on these kind of crops as well. So even other plant material, or other plant foods that we eat, right? Pesticides on that. Mold, especially on these kind of crops, right? If you get low quality plant food, low quality grains, there's a lot of mold involved. In that storage process even if you don't see it on the product itself there are tiny amounts that slip in to the food that we eat right and by the way realize how bad alcohol is by the way while researching this i i found out that even two to three drinks per week is seen to significantly decrease the quality of 
a woman's egg, right? If you didn't know, infertility, like in reproduction, it requires a sperm and an egg to, to produce a baby, right? And so in talking about testosterone health, we eventually get into talking about fertility, our ability to reproduce, because that is part of masculinity, that's part of our testosterone health in general. And so just to give you an idea of how alcohol affects you, right? I don't drink, but I know that alcohol is a very common substance that we all kind of get involved with at some point in our lives. But here's a little tip. Alcohol is that bad for you. It affects you that much. So, moving on from that. Normal milk. Low quality. It's fed on very low quality grains like we talked about above. On like mouldy grains and like low quality like pesticide use, usage on those grains as well. And so it kind of accumulates in the products that the cow produces. In its meat, in its milk. And so normal milk also held in plastic bottles. Plastic, we know from the previous video, is highly estrogenic, right? It leaches into our food, in the stuff that we contain. So if we contain some food or liquid drinks in plastic containers, that tends to leach into our food and have estrogenic effects down the line, right? Not very good for us. So also it's like, you know, given drugs and hormones to kind of produce that milk and it's not so good for us to ingest that milk afterwards, right? The alternative to that is 100% grass-fed milk and in glass bottles, okay? This is far superior, although in my experience, it's very, very hard to find, right? The milk I used to get for years was to go down to the farm, right? And get the milk directly from the farm itself, right? So that there was no processing towards it. There was no... So they, they do a process called pasteurization where they kind of get rid of all the, the good nutrients in the milk because it, it kills off all the bacteria. So they have to make it sterile for the big shops like Tesco or the grocery shops and things like that. Places like Walmart if you're in the US. But even then, from direct from the farm, I went around the back, right? I kind of snuck around the back and saw what the cows were eating, right? And I saw the feed and there was like, there was corn and some kind of grains in there. Most of it was hay, but there was a decent amount of like grain in there. And I didn't know what the hay was made out of or whatever it was, but I knew there was corn in there, right? I knew the cows weren't necessarily fed on the best stuff, right? And so I stopped getting milk from these farms, right? And it's very hard, especially in the UK, to find a decent grass-fed place that does milk, right? I have a local farm, luckily, that does grass-fed meat, and that I'm lucky enough to find that. But dairy is a different situation. Right, it, it's very difficult to find this kind of stuff. So, in my life, I've I've stopped drinking dairy. Right, I used to drink a lot of dairy, but now I've stopped that. So, normal plants foods, the stuff I talked about before. Next on the list, most pesticides that we use in our crops are estrogenic. Right, there's things like atrazine, especially in the U.S. There are far less regulations around the pesticides that we use on our food crops, and so it ends up in our food, and it ends up causing this epidemic of very decreased testosterone and really messed up hormone levels in our lives. And a lot of these can't be washed off, right? You can't, you might try hard to like rub your food like, oh, it's fine if I just wash it off, it's fine, right? Some of it gets into the food itself and can't be washed out, right? The alternative to this is organic food, okay? Organic food is food that is grown and cultivated in such a way that lessens the use of especially synthetic or perhaps more toxic levels of, what do you call it, pesticides, right? They're grown more naturally. They use some pesticides that are naturally derived and it's it's a label that you can sort of use to be able to think, okay, this is healthier plant food, right? So vegetables and fruits and things like that. If it's organic, it tends to be a better quality. It tends to even taste better in my experience, right? I, I only eat organic plant foods, so I only eat fruits. Right, most of my diet is carnivore, but I also eat fruits, and the fruit that I get is organic. And when I made that switch, I was like, oh my goodness, this tastes so much better. I can never see myself going back to the old stuff, right? It kind of tastes like, you know, like fake food to me now, right? I even peel my fruit before I eat it, which I don't know about the science behind that, but I like the taste. I don't like the taste of like apple skin, for example. I like just eating apple by itself without the skin, like peeling it off. That might seem like an extra step. I've not seen any research that, that says that it makes it better for you to eat. But in my mind, like if the pesticides are on the, on the skin of the fruit, then peeling it off just gives me a little bit of like a, I don't know, it might be better, right? 
no science behind that so just that's just something that i do a little preference that i have that you can do as well if you want to normal beef right i, I touched on this a little bit just now similar to the reasons for milk the drugs the hormones the kind of the stuff that it's fed on is not very good for us to eat ourselves so all these effects come downstream from the cow whatever the cow eats is essentially what we're eating right and so we don't want to eat normal beef from like the grocery store and things like that i said i get my meat from a, a grass-fed farm right and they eat grass like they naturally should and so that's healthy for me to eat as well something that's even better than grass-fed beef is wild game so if you can get like deer or venison that's been like hunted that's even better because the deer eats what it wants to eat and like it's in nature it's it's not surrounded by any chemicals or anything like that it's it's raised in the way that it would normally be raised right in the like back in the day the way that we would naturally get our food and get our meat is through this kind of process of hunting right and so that's the the most natural way i can think of, of getting meat the most ethical way as well right we don't store the animal away and like kind of not let it live its life it let it you let it live its life as naturally as it can and bring it to its end with a gunshot poof, as peacefully as possible like imagine being mauled apart by bears and wolves compared to being shot it's quite a peaceful ending in comparison right so next topic any kind of mold so food mold we've talked about but any mold in general right house mold i lived in a house uh, a couple of years ago that had like mold growing on the walls and the ceilings and it wasn't great for my health i was like quite ill from it i was i was a child and <laughs> it wasn't great and that can affect our hormone levels as well dirty dishes old food right you might have around your room or in your kitchen piles of plates and things like that that have like kind of stayed there for a while clean that stuff as soon as possible right it's not good for your health dirty dishes old food so warm and dry and clean is better than damp cold and dirty right these are the kind of conditions that allow mold to grow and it's not good for your health at all okay drinking water okay it contains many pharmaceutical drugs and antibacterial agents let me explain that right so the water that we drink quite a significant amount of it goes to a treatment plant even the sewage and all the water that we use in life it goes to a treatment plant right so it gets treated and the water that's extracted from that gets chemically treated with like a an antibacterial agent such as chlorine or ozone and that gets piped back to our taps that we drink this water right and what that means is a lot of the pharmaceutical products are still in that water right quite a significant portion of the population take a drug that is a contraceptive pill right it means that so that they can't get pregnant right and it's a very hormonally based drug right and this drug just so happens to be not able to be filtered through this filtration process this water treatment process and so it ends up back in our water so what we're drinking is a very, very diluted version of a hormonal drug, right? So no wonder that will affect us in our daily lives, right? In addition to that, we have these chlorine additions in it and it's fortified in the UK at least. I know that water here is fortified with fluoride as well, which isn't that great for our health either. Thankfully, most of this can be filtered out through some cheap versions and some more alternative versions as well. So the cheap version that I use right now is this right it's called like a drip filter you fill it up here and it drips through and this filter inside here it kind of filters through things like chlorine and pharmaceutical drugs and it's been verified by various people including the people in this book they say that this will do the job for the most part if you can't afford a more expensive setup right the more expensive setup is something called a reverse osmosis filter that's like the gold standard of water filtration but this would do if you can't afford that quite yet. And the last thing on the list is something called a shower filter, right? So the water that you drink is pretty similar to the, the water that you get in the shower as well. And so having a filter for that is, is great so that you don't get exposed and literally showered with all these kind of pharmaceutical drugs and antibacterial components, right? It's a lot better for your hair, for your skin, for your general health as well. Okay, with that being said, I'll end it there. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you loved it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you for watching. Hope it helps. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. I'll see you in a bit.